All right, welcome. So tonight on tonight's program with Celebrating Life, we have the, the most reverend Susan Wallace with us. So welcome, Susan. Thank you very much, Padre. It's such a pleasure to have you on. I know many of the times we've had you hosting or greeting, we appreciate your efforts and all that. And you're a huge part of our Celebrating Life community. You serve us well. You serve the community well. So it's a delight to have you also sharing with us tonight. Thank you. It is it is my pleasure and my honor. Awesome. Awesome. Now, Susan, can I ask you, in Celebrating Lifestyle, would you offer an opening prayer for all of us? Love to. All right, thanks. So let's just ask everybody to just put your hand on your heart, just a way of getting in, in touch with your own inner self, and start to breathe slowly with kind of long, relaxed breaths. And let your exhale be longer than your inhale. And as you breathe in this very relaxed, cleansing way, start to shift your focus from the thinking mode of the day into your heart center. And you move naturally into a state of alignment with your true self, which is a limitless being who loves and who receives love with every breath. And let yourself be aware now that as we gather within, with one another in our community on the phone, that there are all the the non-physical beings who are gathering with us as well. And they're blessing us and they're supporting us in making our inner connection and receiving blessings on the call. So in that state of awareness, just let yourself be aware of a particular healing that you would like to receive tonight on this call. It can be physical, emotional, financial, healing a relationship, Whatever it is, whatever you would like most to leave this call having left behind. So open your heart wide like a chalice and begin to feel that all of the non-physical beings who are surrounding us are giving you that healing now. Breathe it in. Allow yourself to feel it and to appreciate what it is like to have that healing in your life. Just bask in the awareness of having received what you most want and what you've asked for. A friend recently told me that the only limit on what we can receive in prayer is how big our cup is that we're willing to open to ask. So open yourself Mm. wide and receive what you most want to receive and bask in the wonderful feeling of having that gift in your life. Now, with all your heart, thank God, thank the saints, the entities, all of the non-physical beings who are bringing about this healing for you tonight. Just feel their great love for you. And now, with a soft smile on your face, please open your eyes and come back to being here with your brothers and sisters on the call. I love that prayer. That was so rich, so rich, so inviting. I know that the the Spirit has moved through you to pray that prayer for all of us. What it reminds me of is a lot of what you prayed was, I call it a Ron Roth prayer, all-inclusive, compassionate. It's an invitation to come near the Christed one, Jesus, God, creator, however you see that relationship grow. So thank you for blessing us with that. As we continue on in this conversation for the next hour, what Susan and I desire is to, we just want to have a conversation about, number one, for the Christian, we're in a season we call Lent, which is actually preparation for Easter, for those who celebrate Easter. But it is that understanding that Christ died for us, but then he actually rose on the third day. And that's how we celebrate, at least for me or for most of you on the call, we call it Easter or Resurrection Sunday. So it's in preparation of, because Jesus always said, do this in memory of me, which was the celebration of the Eucharist. But he, he left a, a template or a pathway for, I call it the peace that passes all understanding. And because of his own 
difficulties in walking that walk. I don't know if he was aware that he had to die in order to transcend, or, and here's how I would use that term, sometimes it's on a physical level, sometimes it's on an emotional level, sometimes it's on a relationship level. But all of us are called to surrender, and I think that's what I call this Lenten season is for me, is those parts of surrender that not only that I'm, quote, still in control of, but desire to allow grace or spirit, however you see it, to take over those areas of my life that I still hold on to dearly because <laughs> I might die. <laughs> and actually, that actually would be a good thing because it's in that part of surrender that we really do walk with the divine. Now, Susan, in your relationship with the divine, even in preparation for tonight's talk, what comes to your mind of, I call it letting go, surrendering, that maybe help prompt you to prepare for tonight? That's a great question, and uh, for me, Easter and the days leading up to Easter is really about surrender. And quite honestly, it's not something I'm real good at. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Can I, we have a sign-up sheet. <laughs> yeah, right. I didn't think I was alone in that. Uh, <laughs> no, not at all. So for me, one thing, Padre, is to be at peace with where I am. Yes. Uh, in my own evolution and notice the smaller things where I can surrender and maybe move into something a little more challenging as I go along. Yeah. <laughs> and it's really, you know, giving up control and obeying the prompting that we receive from the divine. And it's almost when I look at it logically for myself, it's kind of silly to resist surrender because, <laughs> yeah. you know, you're giving into God's will for you, which yes. can only be for your highest and best. Right, right. And don't you think that, well stated, that why do we fight that? Why do we go against the grain on that when we actually know better? We know the spiritual law, the spiritual truth, but then, but we also have free will, and it's in that sacred space in between that, <laughs> mm. that I think the battle goes on. And for me, in particular, the the emotional part, I get caught up in the emotional part, instead of just being neutral with whatever information that I'm given it, or it's being given, that seems to trick me into saying, well, I can take authority over this, or I can take control over this. And it's really about the spirit doing it, and not me and my intellect. Because it really is the mind that is, I call it the trap. But it's, a, again, it's a journey, like all of us. But to me, in this Latin season, I really, I do go deeper in my relationship with myself than also the world and challenge myself to those places that I, can, I actually know is a hindrance to, I call it the spiritual walk. And so I challenge myself. Just like yesterday, I, I usually do adoration, which is, veneration of the Eucharist for the Catholic, and I can't always make it every week, but during Lent, I definitely make that and usually try to do extra masses just because I want to be, I want to set aside time in my walk with the Creator to be more open, and so if I position myself to, I believe there's a greater awareness of God's presence in my life, especially in this journey, and I actually get excited about it because, again, conditioning, done this as a youth or as a, a full adult, but I'm consciously choosing that instead of saying, well, maybe not today. Now, that's, to me, the ego that says that and not necessarily someone who wants to walk, get closer to the divine. It really does offer these qualities that I know and for my soul, it heals so much of my emotional baggage that I still have. Yeah, that's really the gift of Lent. Growing up in Catholic school and everything, Lent was about what are you going to do without? You yeah, know, the theme. It's, it's true. But, but really, it is a gift because I've noticed myself these since Lent started, certain things that, that I might want to do all the time, certain practices where, yeah. I, where I might not do them all the time. Right, um, <laughs> of but course. But I say to myself, well, it's Lent. This is the yeah. time to do it. And the yeah. framework really gives me the support to, to live the practices that I want to. And that's the gift. 
It really is the gift. Yeah, yeah, taking the time for prayer, certain fasting, whatever it is. It's a you joy. know, the, I love this season. Well, I like all seasons, i be truly honest. <laughs> but I know for the church, there's usually Lent and Advent, two seasons that we really go deeper. One is for celebrating Christ's resurrection. The other one is when he was born. But in those two qualities, there is a coming together. But in my own spiritual walk, I would I don't want to assume anything, but I would state that I think you're on, in the same way in the link, um, Susan, and our listeners too, is we want to walk deeper with this divine. And if God is God, which we all know that is a true statement, then why, I think our, our spiritual nature goes to that place. We might not understand it, but it keeps drawing us in. And to me, there's where prayer is and just using prayer in a very wide angle in order to encompass all our beliefs here, but really prayer is divine union or seeking the divine faith. And anytime we can activate that daily, hopefully, we get these beautiful reminders that, you know, it's not working so well today. <laughs> I think I need to turn it, turn it up a little and actually be at peace and then listen again, because it is about responding to grace or that voice, still small voice. And of my mind is dictating the course of today. It's really not beneficial to the whole because, again, we're supposed to surrender to the Spirit. And I'm delighted to do that. I've been aware, too, lately, Padre, of there's time for prayer, and that's a beautiful time of the day. Right. But then also wanting to bring the essence of prayer, the spirit of prayer, the connection that we seek in prayer – Bring it into the real mundane aspects yes. of day to day life. Yes. You know, I just agree with that. All of the all of the little things that you do in, in life. And I think that's the real challenge for me. Yeah. I mean I think we all have those challenges and I think it's actually a good thing because it means we're still alive and we're still seeking. In the Buddhist tradition, it talks about pausing or being still. That's a prayer. That's meditation. That's going to the stillness in order to hear the voice of the Spirit. So I can use my religious terms as Lent or fasting or penance or whatever that might be in your own traditions, but they're there. It's actually pointing the way to. It's making a reference to confession, which I did this week. That's actually, for those who don't know about confession, it's, it's speaking to a priest or a loved one and really just tell them what's on your heart, what you did, not what they did wrong, how we responded to life itself. And it's interesting because in Medjugorje, I was hearing a priest talk about a penance and a, a person who first came into the church from a different denomination. And so part of that act is going to confession or one of the first principles. And at the end of her confession, the priest said, well, this is your penance. And he says, well, say five hour, our fathers, five Hail Marys. And it's like, that's kind of traditional for uh, in Catholicism. And this young lady says, well, why do you call it penance? Isn't prayer supposed to be a joy that you want to connect with the divine? And it's like, whoa, that's a beautiful concept. And it's like, for me, traditional, penance means, well, you sin, now this is what you do in order to feel forgiven. And we know as when we confess, when we surrender, that grace is already there. And it actually becomes a joy for us to surrender that. It turned my attention to the blessing that's already there instead of this old paradigm that I lived with all most of my life. So, again, turning your prayer into joy, it's actually facing the divine that says, here I am. I'm empty. I'm naked. This is who I am. And it's like, what a beautiful concept of, I call it consecration or surrender. So, you know, I believe all of us, especially on this call tonight, desires to go deeper in that walk with the divine. That, that interpretation of prayer after confession calls to mind the word reconciliation, which Ooh, I, th I, I like think is, that. isn't that also used to describe the sacrament of yes, confession? Yes, exactly. Yeah, so you, once we release and confess the past, then we can reunite, yes. reconcile ourselves 
with God, and that's the joy of the prayer that I think that you're talking about. Absolutely. And I'm sure most of us have that reconciliation with, with ourselves, with our God, with our partner, with our husband, our wife, or our children, or our friend, or a co-worker. We all have these beautiful opportunities that present themselves, and need I say probably daily, <laughs> that if we can actually choose that reconciliation that, for me, it would say pause and see what God says about this situation. It becomes very simple, but it's about discipline. Because I can get so heavenly minded, I'm no earthly good, as a favorite <laughs> saying of our Padre Ron Roth. It really does, we can shortchange ourselves or the people that we're involved with by thinking we know what's best instead of actually pausing and listening and then responding to whatever that voice says or the nature of the situation that we seem to be less like God, <laughs> so to speak, in our own actions or temperament. I love the recalling. I've been to many healing services, given many myself. The idea is, I call it the when we look within and find out what is, I call it, the darker areas that we maybe don't want to admit, but we know it's there, and actually allow then grace or presence to put a light on it or relieve our pain by that embrace of the divine. Because you know, Susan, and I know that when God comes near, when the Holy Spirit comes near and illuminates our present moment, we feel so loved, mm -hmm. we feel so surrendered, and to me, that's the ultimate of, I call it that relationship. And wouldn't it be special if we had that every single day? But I think we have to work at it because I think I step away from presence. You know, I have my bookmarks morning and evening. I'm a prayerful person. And I love the, quote, linger in that prayer. But then during the day, it takes a, a discipline to recognize my own actions. And I have the favorite thing I've Many of you have heard before since in November where I'm using the term, Jesus, you take control, whether it's of my speaking, my actions, my thoughts, my finances, my relationships. I name it as many times during the day now, and it gives me such a satisfaction that I don't want to be in control. I want you, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, to be in control of all my actions and words. And I have to say, it helps clarify. It's cleaning up my act, so to speak, because finally I'm not relying on my old self, but actually the spirit who can, who sees all things and can position me for greater works. So that's why, again, even for Lent, it refocuses me that I want to draw near to that presence of God. Padre, I'm so glad you mentioned that. I remember after you shared it several months ago, in, you said during the day, Jesus, you take care of this. Yeah. And I, it was so freeing to me every time, yeah. whether it was something where I noticed I was trying to control too much or something where I was just really at a loss, whatever it was, Jesus, you take yeah. care of this. And there was such peace. And I, I kind of forgot about it, as we do about a lot of practices. Oh, of so thank yeah. you. Thank you for mentioning it again. <laughs> it's valuable for me and like all of us, if we hit a spiritual truth and something illuminates in us, I say run with it because <laughs> it really will take us to that place of, I call it holiness or wholeness, which we're all called to be because the scripture says we are the light of Christ. We have that ember, that presence in us. So what stops us from illuminating that to ourselves and those around us? And it's only our blocks, our disappointments or anger whatever that might be, that those still, I call it those pockets are there. And so for me, that I can hopefully surrender at each moment, it will, I call it, make me holy, whatever that term is to other people. I just know, I just want to be clear vessel, an open vessel, so not only to heal my soul and spirit and body, but also those around me, by words, by sayings, by touch, whatever that might be. So, Susan, speaking of those who have gone before us mm. and actually have walked the walk, and we get to listen to the examples of a favorite saint that I think you were just introduced to. Yes, last summer, actually. Giuseppe Mascotti. And one of the things that 
I really like about him. Well, there's a lot to like about him, but <laughs> he relatively contemporary. He died in 1927, so oh, wow. we can still imagine him walking on this earth, like in in a world that somewhat resembles the world we live in, and yes. that makes him for me much more relatable than very much someone who lived in the 1200s or something. Yeah. What I'd like to do before talking about him, I actually received a message from him that I would like to share. Please. I just asked him, will you be with us on the on the call tonight? Oh yes. And he said very immediately and quickly, he said, Not just me. And he said, Many, many, many he showed me this like uh, just legions of beings, saints, wow. enlightened beings who love celebrating life ministries. There's wow. a whole huge family, if you will, or association of yeah. non-physical beings who connect with us as celebrating wow. life. They certainly come to retreats, but they also come on our on our phone calls and whenever two or more are gathered, whenever yeah. anybody in the community gets together and when there's a prayer meeting or prayer service, they're there. And one of the reasons they're with us is they just love the vibration of love that this community generates. They oh, wow. really love our energy. And he showed me a magnifying glass. And he said, this is, we take your energy, you know, you're on earth doing the physical part. And we take the energy that you create and we magnify it. And we send it into the world for healing. Wow. Uh, he, he specifically said, we send to people in places you never even know about. <laughs> <laughs> I love that piece. Yeah, but as much as... We appreciate the help of the non-physical mm. beings who help with our healing, who help us with our learning, who help us in, in every way. In our lives, when we ask them, they appreciate us and what we're doing here, too, because we're really helping them with their, their work, their mission of bringing healing to the earth. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And needless to say, one of the members of this group on the other side is Padre Ron Roth. Ah, he did, he yes. Just, he did mention briefly. He, did, he knows. <laughs> well, I'm he glad knows. he joined a group. <laughs> yeah, he knows our teacher. He knows. Our and That's as a matter sweet. of fact, there's a lot of similarities. Oh, interesting. Between Saint Muscati and Padre Ron Roth in their healing work. <laughs> I, um, I have to pause you one second. <laughs> I don't know if it's Ron or just my my remembrance, but Ron loved Biscottis. <laughs> any different or you know he likes his food so i'm sure he found a group that would match that for him. sorry about that i just had to say that <laughs> muscotty with an m yeah okay <laughs> got it but i will admit that when i first heard of him i said what saint biscotti what is this <laughs> um, but the, the similarity between the two is their healing work and while while saint muscotty was a doctor he oh, okay. certainly had that form and that whole yeah. arena for his healing mm-hmm. work. He lived and he knew very much that whatever medical practice, whatever healing he brought to people was was at least as much spiritual as physical. Wow, that's beautiful. That's yeah, beautiful. and so he reminds me very much of Padre Ron when, and now you, Padre, when you mm. stand at a healing service and bring that forth. Sure. Um, and that's how St. Muscati was very, very aware that as a doctor, it was crucial that he attend not just to the body, but to the soul and the spirit of the person. Oh, oh. and back then, way back then, that really, you really didn't bring that forth. So for him to be acknowledged within the church as that, there has to be some beautiful qualities that came forth from his daily living, that he lived the spiritual principle that he knew. So, yeah, wow. he, really, he really did. That's actually one of the hallmarks when you, when you start to learn about him, is that his daily life 
was his spiritual practice, you know, was a was a ministry, a practice to bring bring the divine presence into the world. So when he certainly in dealing with patients, dealing with the students that he taught, he had a large part of his life was training medical students. Wow. And even in his personal life, his personal relationships and the way he lived, he really did everything with the awareness that it was all about devotion to God. Mm. And everything was impeccable. Not He was very poor. He voluntarily chose to live very poor, which wow. a lot of his fellow doctors didn't like it because they kind of made, <laughs> made him look bad. Oh, yes, of course. Of course, yeah. Yeah, and he would... Oh, interesting. Yeah, whatever the standard fee was for or a medical appointment and for a house call, which they made then, mm. he, he said, no, I'm not taking that much. That's too much. Wow. To take from people. Um, no, wow. that was his choice, but he also, he was just somebody who was very, very clear about his choices and what was his ministry, his mission, how to live, how to practice, but he, yeah. didn't, he didn't tell other people they had to. It reminds me of, we're studying with our students on Mother Teresa, you yeah. know, and her way was way against probably the world's way of serving God, serving the poor, the poorest, but yet she had this devotion to Mary, to Jesus, and she heard those whispers, and she followed those whispers. And again, she became a, quote, modern fate in our time and age. But to, just to hear of Muscati, his approach. But I like what you're saying, Susan. What I like about it is whatever your profession is, just do the best you can. And hopefully do it by the spirit and not necessarily by the flesh. Even though Absolutely. it's work, it's all those things, but it's really bringing the light to those around us. And ultimately, I think that's how we serve. That's how we allow that grace, the blessing to come through us is actually in that in the act of love today. What's in front of me, I will serve to the greatest. And we get to choose whether we get paid for it or not. That's part of our choice or just our acceptance. It's a beautiful model out there. And I appreciate you sharing that with us. I fully agree with you, Padre. The more I become familiar with him, the more I see in common between him and Mother Teresa. Wow. The choosing poverty. And he even, there's a quote from him, and it's almost word for word like what Mother Teresa used to say, that the, he said, Jesus lives in the face of the poor. Oh, wow. Wasn't that a lot like Mother Teresa had words? Just Very like, much yeah. so. Just that statement alone, if we can take that in, we might have different words for it. But actually, the spiritual truth that comes with that really illuminates in my own soul just hearing those words. And as I want to say, there's almost a conviction there that I'm not doing that enough. It's not about condemnation. It's just about awareness because we know we turn to God. God is already there for us. And so it's that heavenly embrace that says, you do good. I love you. We can do better. Of course we can. But it's just allowing, I call it, the spiritual part, the Holy Spirit, the spirit, the spirit of light that's in us to actually make more room to come out of us in a sense. Because if we have that Christ energy in us, we need to let it go. But part of that letting go is unbinding us of all the stuff we either took upon ourselves or was put on us through ministers, teachers, parents, friends, whatever that might be. I love that quality that he brings to the table tonight. Yeah, he's, I mean, I think anybody who gets a little spark just from hearing about him would love to read. There's just, there's quite a few books about him, but a lot of them are in Italian, but there are a few in English as well. Ah. Uh, yeah. The more, for me, the more I read, the more I feel his presence around me. Mm. Yeah. Well, it's, I mean, I have to say, Susan, when you mention his name and then what comes through his work, and like he says, and not only I that comes, but hundreds or thousands mm. come with them. And when you mentioned that, I felt presence all over me. One of the symbols for me is for presence is also my ears begin to burn. So I know presence is here and wants to speak through. So it really tapped a, 
a spiritual artery for me when you said that. And I felt that just like at the Casa, the entities, the beings of light working with us and yes. the saints and the sages is an open door. And of course, it was a delight to hear that Padre Ron was with that group. It's like, yes, because I remember when I asked the question of Joel at the Casa, it's like, well, because he first said that Ron was in a, a spiritual hospital when he first passed over. So gets well in spirit and emotions. And then the next time I asked, which I think was a year later, and he goes, well, oh, he went on, he's, he, went, he went on to a spiritual school now. So oh. guess where he picked <laughs> to go or was asked of him to do it. So I'm just a little, very delighted in knowing there is a place for him, like all of us, because we continue to, to learn and to also to give back because we are spirit and we're not trained. That's who we are. We're just hosting this body right now. So I wow, love that truth. Mm-hmm. Me too. Me too. And I just, yeah, I love living with the knowledge that these beings are just with me all the time and, and around, around and helping us. Yeah, of course, I think you mentioned this, but most of people know that Padre Pio has been a good, I don't call it omen, <laughs> of spirit overseeing celebrating life in ministry time, in devotional. Again, Padre Ron and myself have great respect for Padre Pio, the work he has done in the past, but also still does today through his intercession. And he always talked about uh, pray to your angels or pray to his angel to send messengers to other people, however you want to see it. He's very active on the other side. And again, Padre Pio seems to always come through. And one other one that is in association with it for me personally is Father Solanus Casey. He was a Compucian monk, but he wasn't educated or he was didn't have the capacity for education. So they actually made him a monk or a priest, but he couldn't give out communion or hear confessions, which to me, that's a part of the bigger role of being a priest, but he accepted that role. And so they made him a, a doorkeeper for the monastery, figured that that'll be the least that he could do. And it turned out that the world came to that door because he had spiritual favor with God. And in his, his role was just saying, be grateful to God and give thanks to God for what is good, what isn't good, but just give thanks. And it's like, he really changed the lives of thousands of people. And I was reading him today. I was reading Padre Bill. I was reading Solanus Casey and Father Andre is another healer. And the similarities that, that they all had had great mystical truths. They had visions of Mary and Jesus. They also had visions of the beyond the veil, so to speak. And so God, Jesus would speak to them and then they would announce that to the world and miracles would always happen in their midst. But towards the end of each one of their lives, which they all have passed since all of them were, I call it in our lifetime, you know, or the 19th century. So they're kind of still living saints, but they, at the end, like Padre Pio, who had the stigmata for 50 years, which are the wounds of Christ, the five wounds, it talked about the last year he was really slowing down and he had arthritis. And it's like, well, I didn't know that. It's like, I knew he carried the wounds of Christ. I knew he carried people's, I call it sin or darkness, and he could transcend that. But in his closing years of his life, a lot of these situations, was he had problem breathing. And it's like the complication of just the body letting go. And the reason why I'm saying this is because we all are affected by, I call it some health issue. We all want to be healed, and yes, we will. But again, we're supposed to transcend this body, which we call death. And on the other side is our spirit lives, which is me speaking to you now, which is you breathing through you. We all have that same spirit, which is the spirit of Christ. And so it is in transcending that that we actually step into what we are already feeling, that closeness to our creator. And it's in that capacity that life here on earth changes, starting with us and then with those around us. And so the more we can let go, like Padre Pio did, in the end, it said he had a, such a beautiful, peaceful death, even though he suffered much. Mm. And Father Slanis Casey, the day before he passed away, he told his mentor, he goes, oh, you know, 
tomorrow's going to be a beautiful day. I'm like, why did you say that? And he goes, well, because there's just going to be more light tomorrow. And, of course, they look back and they go, oh, my God, he was predicting his death. He knew. And he says the, the great thing about dying, in a sense, because he had seen almost the same issues that Padre Peel did, asthma, arthritis, and his body just shutting down was, when I die, I want to go. But he says, the only reason why I want to go is so that we all may be one. Oh. And I went, whoa, back then, that statement was never passed around, so to speak. But he understood the Trinity. He understood we all live and grow and have our being in God. And it's in that quality that, we, that we're listening to right now. The angels are talking to you. Mm. The angels are actually, the activity of God is in your midst. Wherever you are, however you're listening to this, maybe it's in a car, maybe it's in the hospital, maybe it's at your computer, but God's presence is near. So we just now just tap into that presence. We just talk to this presence because it has a heart of gold that wants and desires to not only heal you, but also transcend any situation that you and I are challenged with today or tomorrow or next week. Because the problem is we don't give up our problems. We hold them. We try to figure them out. But the idea for any mystic, any saint, any light being is they know where to turn in that time. And you and I are smart enough to know we want to follow our mentors. We want to know, did they suffer? Did they get challenged? Yes. But that spiritual truth is what connects us all is God. And we go back to God to be dealt with. So live your life to the full as these mystics did before, but also use your own personality because it's in that, that what God has given you, God given me, that we know that God is near us. So let's just right now just tap into that presence because it's going to benefit you and I. It's Susan. There are many who know people in the hospital through sickness, through disease, through surgery. We just pray for them now. We just send them God's light and just the gratitude of who we are. There are others that need a home, a new environment, maybe a new relationship. It's in this quality of breath that we breathe, the inner, the outer, that the Spirit of God is within us and now goes out of us by the angels' assistance, by the light beings, and they direct the path for not only our health, our healing, but that reconciliation that all of us desire. We even pray for those who, the three women that got killed in the Veterans Hospital in California. Our souls, our prayers go out to them and their families. For all the military, I'm just thinking about the military and for those who serve our country in such a gracious way. They have a love for honor to give us freedom, which we all cherish and desire. But you know, some of those die in battle, so we bless their souls. And there are other those who come back, but they're wounded. And then they have a choice, either be bitter or better. And how do they transcend that? I don't think it's by the mind. I believe it's by the heart. So then they decide, good or bad, God is. And I'm going to make something of my life. That's the spirit talking through them, encouraging them. As that spirit is encouraging you right now. Maybe you're laid up. Maybe you can't move your body. Maybe you're sick in bed with the flu, with a challenge. Maybe you're, you're stuck in your job and you can't get out of it, but you want more. It's all these qualities that that is the Spirit of God going before us. That is the Spirit of Christ, the living Spirit, the Holy Spirit, that desires for us to grow beyond our means, which means we need to surrender in this moment because it's in the peace that passes all understanding. That's presence, my friend. That's my friend, the Holy Spirit. That's your friend, the Holy Spirit. So we just allow that grace, that presence now to fill you, to heal you, to restore you. Many people have congestion. So in the name of Jesus, 
We just ask your spark of divine light. Your spark illuminate. Relieve the chest. Relieve the breathing. Relieve the congestion. Now, through the name of Jesus. Just that divine flow clearing, restoring, renewing. Even head trauma. I thank you, O Lord our God, for that word that goes forth and releases people. Just head trauma. Come, Holy Spirit. Bring new life, new breath, new clarity. Put on the mind of Christ, which has all the elements of healing and restoration. Restore old relationships, like a digging a new old well, and then new water comes into this well. The same way with once we let go, once we forgive, this embodiment of God's presence now begins to overtake whatever situation or challenge we have. Maybe you have a young child. You just gave birth. We just say, thank you, O Lord God, for this new beginnings as a new mom, as a new dad, but also to be the beholder of this gift, to allow grace, light to come through this child. I thank you, O Lord, our God. I thank you for your healing element that is not only healing and restoring, but we pray for all those in jail, incarcerated, those who are on drugs. And we can name all those drugs that we know or know of. And we just say, Holy Spirit, just come and be that minister of light. Send them friends that would illuminate their own journey. Hear their hearts, heal their wounds, and then set them free. We thank you, Lord our God, for those who need a new home or finances to get a home or looking for a home or the bank won't release their own criteria to allow grace. So we're just going to break through through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the saints, the intercessions, the light beings that are all around us right now. They're doing the job of creation, going forth and creating something brand new. So whatever your intention here tonight on this call, place your hand on your heart as Susan opened with prayer and let's tap into that grace, that miracle working power of grace. Just come, Holy One of Israel. Come, Divine Breath. Come, Our Lady, Queen of Peace. Come, divine breath. If there's a part of your body that is sick, disease, just place that hand now on that part if you can reach. And we just all say together, come Holy Spirit. Padre Ron Roth. St. Muscati, come. Raphael, come. Bless my children. Bless my enemies. Bless the abundance that's coming my way, where we freely receive the healing, the reconciliation, the abundance of God. Because thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So today we declare your freedom, your abundance, your forgiveness. Any lack, this divine light begins to now expand and grow. And we're expecting marvelous miracles to happen because God is. The creator of the universe has all, all what we desire and even more. He sees beyond our own limitations. So let the abundance come. Even for those students on this call, let the, the grades be raised up. May the intelligence of God, the wisdom of God, pour through you through the angel's help. Maybe you're going to be taking a test for a new job. The qualifications are there. Your earnest heart is there. So we align now with the heart of Jesus, the heart of Mary, the heart of all the light beings. Harvey Ronrod. St. Muscati, come. I thank you, O Lord of God, for this level of integrity that is passing through. And those doors that were once lost, maybe you're bidding on a home. Maybe you need to sell your home. I decree in the name of Jesus, it is done. It is finished. The buyer is there. The buyer is there and show up. And we'll agree upon, even give greater than what was proposed. I thank you, O Lord, our God. That comes out of heaven. <laughs> Sorry, people, but that's a, that's a given. You can tell the, the urgency of the Spirit when it comes through. I thank you, O Lord, our God, for the healing of these knees, these hips. I thank you, O Lord, God, for that freedom, hearing in the name of Jesus. Open, open. Now that we hear the word that goes forth, 
it now becomes a healing balm, a healing oil. So some of you are going to feel heat or even trembling of the body. Thank you, O oh Lord our God, for the activity of the angels and saints tonight. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I thank you, O oh Lord our God. And Susan, if you want to just follow through with prayer, you know, as soon as I shut up, <laughs> I'll allow you to pray also with me. But it's just there's a beautiful tenderness going on. So we just say thank you and just allow Susan to pray also with us. My heart is full, and I'm, and I'm sure everybody on the call is feeling that. And so I give thanks, I give great thanks to you, Padre, for that beautiful prayer and to all the unseen beings who have been here with us, who have helped us to tap into the divine energy to make our connection in prayer. And I thank all of our angels and guides, the beings who are with us, guide us every minute, every day, every step of the way, and who are always there if, when we err, when we step off our path, when we forget, when we fall under the illusion of life. They... They're there to just help us come right on back. And it's really what our life is, is walking our path, going off our path a little and going back on. And we just thank and we invite and ask always, not just on a call, not just in a healing service, always that the angels and the beings and the guides who are meant to support us in our lives, we open up and we give permission and we ask them to show us and help us and lead us to the life we want to live and the mm. eternal life with God in our hearts. And for this, we are very, very grateful. Amen. Beautiful prayer, Susan. Beautiful prayer. Beautiful closing. There's never an end to prayer, but when well, speaking... <laughs> On this teleclass, we have to end, but the prayer doesn't end. It's a continual flow of grace. So we just allow, just in your own heart, just bless your family, bless your spouse, your pets, your co-workers. Be a blessing, especially during this Lenten season. As we, when we celebrate Easter, there is something to be grateful for, that you have a friend in God, a friend in the Spirit. And it's in that quality that we live our lives to the fullest. So I bless our community, I bless my family, my neighborhoods, our neighborhoods, our city, our states, our country, and I bless all the world, the seven billion plus people. We just send them your light, Lord, the consciousness that we all may be one, so we help one another grow and heal. So I seal in the good work of the Holy Spirit in your life, in my life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Susan, thank you for being on the call tonight. Thank you. And Padre. I know if you want to know more about Susan's work, it's SusanWallace.com. She has a beautiful website. Just check out her beautiful coaching work. She's a beautiful being and has sent many lights to this world. So check it out and, and respond to her website. Namaste. Well, until we see each other again, God bless and hope to see many of you at the spring retreat. Much love to everybody.